At London Financial Studies, we focus exclusively on capital markets. Our programs offer practical learning to professionals from all over the world. Public courses are delivered in London, New York and Singapore. Our teachers are leading experts in their fields with a wealth of practical knowledge. They are skilled communicators who can get the message across quickly and effectively. Rupesh Taylor has over a decade of experience in analysis, trading and investment management in the bank sector. He has worked for Tier 1 institutions both on the sell side and buy side, successfully predicting the bank stress seen in recent years in many European economies. Post-2007, there's been you know, a significant increase in the incidence of bank failures and near-bank failures. Um, and this has really exposed the, you know, the, vol the inherent volatility of banking institutions. I think what we are evolving towards is a world in which there's far more burden sharing in terms of private sector investors in failed banks. When we started this process in you know, 2007, 2008, the rule book was very much one of bailouts where you know, the government would come in and invest, um, in inject common equity into banks that have failed. They would come in at the very bottom of the capital structure and support you know, all, uh, all stakeholders above them in the capital structure. Progressively throughout this crisis, um, you know, the treatment of creditors um, in bank bailouts has been getting worse and worse. You know, whilst the current incident, you know, the current uh, incidence of bank failures and stress is, is very much Western focused, um, you know, there are many, many instances historically of banking crises in you know, emerging markets and other geographies, and the principles are really universal. The methodologies of pre-2007 have really been deemed to be inadequate you know, the, in many, many respects. You know, banks were highly rated and yet failed. Um, banks were passing stress tests conducted by the European Banking Authority and by national regulators and yet several months later were failing. Driven by the failure of, you know, and problems in many Western banking organisations, um, we've had stress tests conducted for Irish banks, for Spanish banks, for UK banks, um, for European banks by the EBA. Um, but really, stress testing is, is central to bank analysis and valuation. Uh, whether we're in a period of banking stress or not, it, it's, it's very difficult to actually confidently invest and conduct business with banks unless we have an idea of how robust they are. The consequences of either not being able to conduct um, this kind of work in-house or not being able to properly interpret the work of others is that you leave yourselves um, you know, exposed to several things. I think one is that um, you, know, you, you become very reliant on third-party uh, information and analysis um, and you're essentially taking it as, as given without critically thinking about it. Essentially what we're seeing is um, a rotation of what the, what, the, what the current stock of bank capital securities is into a new kind of bank capital security. And that new kind of bank capital security is actually more risky for investors than the, the current stock. These are securities which are still evolving, they're, they're relatively new, there's not a, an awful, the, the universe is relatively small at present, um, but it is uh, a universe that's likely to grow, it's being um, actively supported by regulators and encouraged by regulators to develop, um, but these securities will typically have 100% principal write down when a bank's quarter one ratio, capital ratio, falls below a certain trigger. They may also have conversion to common equity features in the event that a bank's quarter one capital ratio falls below a certain trigger. So these securities obviously have a very binary optionality to them, which the investor in those securities is inherently short. And the consequences of investing in those securities and getting that judgment on whether a bank is going to survive or fail wrong are immense. This LFS course covers stress testing, analysis and valuation of banks in light of new banking regulations. Excel exercises show you how to systematically evaluate banks' capital and liquidity to predict failure. You 
you know, one of the premises of this course is that um, you know, you know, providing a robust and practical framework for stress testing banks' capital and liquidity is a precursor to gauging the likely evolution of confidence in those banks. Is confidence in a bank going to you know, remain stable or is it going to be vulnerable? And I think that the methodologies are becoming a bit more market standard. So, you know, we've been through five years of you know, ongoing banking stress and you know, we've evolved from, you know, I guess, met methodologies that were quite loose initially in terms of the European Banking Authority's stress testing of European banks. You know, the, the, you know, the initial test in 2011 was heavily criticised as not being robust enough. The course is, is trying to give users um, both the ability to conduct stress testing analysis and valuation for themselves in-house, um, but if, if they don't wish to do that in-house, it's also aiming to give them an understanding of how to interpret information that they receive from other people. One of the things that we're going to do in this course is to look at a lot of case studies of banks that have failed, what the differences were, what the similarities were, what the key problems were that you know, regulators were trying to solve and what the different outcomes were for securities holders and what that means for cases going forward really to feel confident using the methodologies taught um, to go away and um, be able to stress test, analyse and value banks and their securities. Essentially what the course provides is um, bringing users to the very forefront of uh, latest thinking and understanding on, on banks. <music>